Chapter 4. I can't believe how many people are here just to greet the new VKs. The only greeting party we got was Fairy Godmother, who nervously reminded us about curfew, and Audrey, who kept calling Ben Benny Boo. Maybe things really have changed. Pastel-clad students, teachers, and parents gathered eagerly on Ordon Prep's front lawn to greet the school's newest aisle additions. Throngs of curious Oridonians had flocked to the event and were milling about the well-groomed gardens, converging under the King Bee statue and clustering on the school steps. They were all beyond excited to welcome the second wave of villain students to their side of the sea. The Oridon Knights marching band, wearing snappy blue and gold uniforms, blasted out a toe-tapping number as the school's cheer squad shook their pom-poms and rallied the growing crowd. Ben's parents, Beast and Belle, mingled among the crowd, looking as proud as ever of their son and his efforts to rule the kingdom with kindness. The royal couple smiled at each other, noting all the electrified citizens who were waving homemade welcome all posters, fly, flying painted reunite banners, and holding cheery flower, cheery flower bouquets. Queen Leah and her granddaughter, Audrey, daughter of Sleeping Beauty, stood near a row of mis meticulously trimmed hedges. The two looked on with considerably less enthusiasm than most. Audrey's mouth formed a serious line, and her brown eyes were unsmiling. She pulled at her long, ash-brown hair, which was newly streaked with pink and blue, straightened her pink leather ensemble, and frowned at all the hoopla. Ordon Prep did not need more evil offspring students. The first four had been more than enough for her taste. The rest of Ordon, however, felt differently. A giant video monitor was set up atop the school's battlements to carry a real-time feed on the, of the aisle's barrier opening. Welcome to our new VKs, blazed across its screen. A formal royal guard detail stood in their pressed gold uniforms around the lawn. The king's stretched limo, now painted purple in Mao's honor, sat parked and ready to go to the circular driveway. In a few moments, it would be crossing the barrier to pick up the four new VKs. Many Oridon students, like Fairy Godmother's daughter Jane, were eager to, be, eager to befriend their new villain classmates. Jane held tightly to Carlos's arm as he told her all about the twins. She couldn't wait to, to meet them. Doug, son of Dopey, was equally enthusiastic. He waited next to Evie in his full band uniform, complete with brass buttons and a tall gold hat, excited to finally welcome the famous Dizzy. Evie had shared many stories about her precious owl friend. Evie laughed with delight, flirtatiously took Doug's arm, then noticed something out of the corner of her eye. Here they come, she gasped. Doug and Evie shared knowing looks filled with happy anticipation. Then Doug took hold of his drum major bat baton and started to lead the band in an upbeat tune. Mal and Ben made their grand entrance into the packed festivities. Mal surveyed the bustling ce celebratory scene, quite pleased to see the newest VKs would be greeted with more excitement and fanfare than she and her friends had been when they first arrived. She was amazed by how things in Ordon had truly changed. Ben adjusted his golden crown, which bore the Beast family crest, and stepped in front of the crowd to speak. Mao moved to join her crew, but Fairy Godmother blocked her path. Oh, stay, said Fairy Godmother, looking proper as always in a conservative powder blue dress. Stay here, asked Mao, taking her place by Ben's side on the stage. The couple waved to the jubilant crowd. Mao who had once found the royal wave rather awkward, now performed it like a pro. Bibbidi bobbidi one, two, one, two. Can everybody hear me? Asked Fairy Godmother, testing the microphone. Ben, she said pointedly, and passed him the golden mic. Thank you, Fairy Godmother, said the king. Then he broke out one of his trademark warm smiles that put everyone at ease. Ben had really come into his own as the leader of the country. His approval ratings were off the chart. What's up, Oradon? The king belted with rock star style. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out to welcome our new arrivals. They'll be here soon. 
his first official act as king had been inviting the children of Ordon's sworn enemies to live among them. At the time, the royal proclamation had been controversial, to say the least. But Ben's courage, conviction, and risk paid off, and now all the citizens of Oradon were cheering on the arrival of more VKs. Well, most of the citizens. Queen Leah, clearly displeased, pulled nervously at the strand of pearls around her wrist, leaned over to Audrey and whispered, Not like we had a choice. Audrey nodded back, unsmiling. It worked out pretty well with the first four, Ben mused to the crowd, especially for you, Chad. Chad, the preppy son of Cinderella and Prince Charming, shouted back. His blonde curls shook as he laughed at his own clever joke. Yeah, real funny, said Audrey. She snapped her fingers and Chad cowered in obedience. Ben gazed out at his subjects, then turned to face Mal and focused only on her. Mal, he said, smiling at his girlfriend, this is the exact spot where we first met not so long ago. Doug suddenly removed his marching band hat. His shoulder-length blonde hair sprang free. Evie handed him a guitar and grinned conspiratorially. Doug stepped forward, cleared his throat, and began strumming an acoustic version of Did I Mention? It was the song Ben had serenaded Mal with when he first declared his love for her in a very public way after a tourney victory. Ben spoke softly into the mic, addressing Mal. I feel like I've known you my whole life. Did I mention... I'm in love with you? Ben spoke from his heart as he told Mal that he never thought love like this would happen to a guy like him. Then he bent down on one knee. Mal gasped audibly. Ben held out a little blue box. Inside was a spectacular, one-of-a-kind, vintage-style ring with an enormous purple stone encased in a dragon design. It was by far Ben's most romantic surprise for Mal yet. It's you and me, Mal. It's you and me forever. Will you marry me? Will you wear the crown and be my queen? But before Mal could respond, Audrey blurted out, No! She couldn't stop herself. The people who stood around her glared at the interpretation. Interruption. Yes! Yes! exploded Mal, who fortunately hadn't heard Audrey. Happiness danced across her face. She couldn't believe she was getting married to Ben. The Oradon Palace bells pealed loudly as Ben slipped the ring on Mal's finger, stood up and embraced her. The couple kissed, a real true love's kiss, as if they were the only two people in the world. The crowd instantly interrupt, erupted in wild applause as a cannon released a sea of bubbles into the air. Evie, Belle, and Fairy Godmother all had tears in their eyes. Carlos, who'd thrown on Doug's band hat, chest bumped Beast, then turned to find Jay. The two pals clapped and pumped their fists, ecstatic for their friends. Dozens of onlookers flipped their DIY welcome signs to reveal sweet congratulatory messages like, Queen Mal, happily ever after, and true love, Mal. Doug and Evie high-fived each other for their clever signage and exceptional teamwork. They really did work well together. Doug took in the massive scale of Ben's romantic gesture and shrugged sheepishly. It makes our movie nights seem a little tame, he said humbly. In contrast to Ben and Mal's relationship, Evie and Doug's flirtship was progressing at a measured pace. Not that they didn't spend time together or make each other happy, but there was one big bridge that they hadn't crossed yet. Evie looked at Doug tenderly and full of appreciation. I love you, our movie nights. She seemed to have wanted to say something else, but just smiled instead. Me too, said Doug. He smiled back awkwardly. Yeah, said Evie, turning away quickly. Why couldn't she say what she felt? She was happy to wear an oversized heart pendant around her neck, but she wasn't one to wear her real heart on her sleeve. Audrey, surrounded by the colossal celebration of love, felt crushed under the weight of utter devastation and raw heartache from losing Ben for good. Hearing that stupid song again only made things worse. Queen Leah narrowed her eyes with fury at her disappointing granddaughter, her pink ruffled collar framing the dour frown on her face. A lifetime of plans. Gone, she said. Our family status. 
gone. You were supposed to be his queen, and you let him slip through your fingers. Your mother could hold on to a prince in her sleep. Audrey winced and tried to hold back the tears she felt coming. She swallowed the cold lump that had formed in her throat. Don't you think I feel bad enough already, Grammy? A squad of girls stood next to them, delighting loudly in the sheer romance of Ben's proposal and chatting giddily about it. Ben and Mal are the best, said one. I'm so excited for Mal to be our queen, said another. Audrey turned on them angrily. You'd really rather have a VK on the throne than me? She asked angrily. What is wrong with you people? The girls rolled their eyes, laughed among themselves, and took their happiness elsewhere. But it didn't matter. Everywhere Audrey looked, all of Ordon seemed to be rejoicing over Mal and Ben's engagement. What is wrong with everybody? She fumed. She watched with hurt-filled eyes as Evie ran to Mal and hugged her tightly. Wait, did you know? Mal, clearly still shocked, asked Evie. Everything, replied an overjoyed Evie. She couldn't have been happier for Mal or thought of a single person who would make a bit better queen. You're really going to rock that crown, Evie added, running her hand along Mal's long purple strands. Then Evie turned to more important business. I've done about a thousand sketches of your wedding dress, and Belle's already planning an engagement party for next week, she said, and armored with the idea of all the fun wedding planning that lay ahead. Mal tilted her head and laughed. Then it's a really good thing that I said yes. Belle and Beast all, sm all smiles joined them. Hugs, hi. That Beast proclaimed and swallowed up Mal in a giant father-in-law to be bear hug. Hugs, hi, replied Mal, glowing and at home with the royal family. I finally get a daughter, said Belle, her face filled with sheer joy. I love you, Belle, said Mal, and she meant it. I love you too, Mal, Belle, in return. Mal hugged them both. She was grateful to be joining a family who loves and supported one another. Teeming with happiness, Ben looked at the family scene and turned toward Fairy Godmother. Thank you so much for your help, Fairy Godmother. I think she liked it, she, he said. He glanced back at Mal and felt like the luckiest guy in the world. Bibbidi bobbidi you betcha, said a very pleased Fairy Godmother. No sooner had Fairy Godmother congratulated Ben with a warm pat on the back and hurried off than... Then Evie, Carlos, and Jay bounded to Mal with goofy, exaggerated steps. Jay bowed elaborately in Mal's direction and spoke. His voice syrupy with sarcasm. All bound to your royal majesty. Evie curtsied with overblown rever reverence. Carlos followed suit. Your royal purpleness, he said between stifled laughs. Silence, you annoying peasants. Mal told them, shooing away her friends with feigned disinterest. As you wish, my liege, said Jay, who rose from his ridiculous pro prostrate, prostrate pose. Your crankiness, added Carlos. The boys continued to crack themselves up as they bowed and scrapped away, happy that although Mal was the future queen of Ordon, at heart, she'd always be their goofy friend. Mal turned to find Audrey staring at her with disdain. Her smile immediately faded. This couldn't be good. Congratulations. You won him fair and square, said Audrey. Then she cocked her head. Oh, wait. No, you didn't. You spelled Ben to destroy all of Oradon. Touching story for the grandkids, she sneered. Okay, let's do this, said Ben, who stood nearby, unaware of Audrey's comment. He glanced at his watch, then fist bumped Jay and Carlos with new focus. They were expected elsewhere. The king was clearly in good spirits and ready to head to the aisle to pick up Dizzy, Celia, Squeaky, and Squirmy. Mal flashed a fake grin at Audrey. Speaking of kids, we have some kids waiting on us, so if you'll excuse me, she said, leaving a stony Audrey behind. With a pained expression, Audrey watched as the royal attendants opened the limo doors for King Ben, Mal, Evie, and Carlos while Jay jumped effortlessly into the driver's seat. The limo's custom license plate now read Mal in honor of the queen to be.